Welcome, and in this lesson, we're going to learn a little bit more about GPG keys as they relate to YUM repositories. In fact, what we're going to do is we're going to learn how to configure it from a given repository. So sometimes we need to know how to configure GPG keys. Now think about it like this. How do you know that a specific package that you're downloading from the repository is actually verified and signed by the repository and is authentic? For some reason, maybe there's an opportunity for a man-in-the-middle attack or the ability for some odd reason a different package to be downloaded to your system that's not verified as official repository package. This could compromise your system. GPG keys allow us to take the public verified key, sign it against or verify the signature against the GPG key in the repository for the package. That way, Whenever we download the package, it ensures that it's coming from the repository and that package has permission to be in the repository. So even though sometimes it's easier to configure a new repository without a GPG key, it's often required for security purposes. So knowing how to do this is extremely important. It only takes a few minutes, so please make sure you pay attention. So I have my Apple repository from Fedora. I have the URL located here. Make sure you grab this URL. We can pause the video or however you're gonna do it, but get that URL. And let's do a yum config manager, dash dash add dash repo, and then we will paste in our repository name. Now this is gonna add our new repository. As you can see, it adds it with the parameters that don't include a GPG key. So what we need is we need the public GPG key from the repository and we need to configure our repository to use that GPG key. So the first thing I'm gonna do is with this GPG URL, I'm actually gonna open up a new browser. So I'm gonna paste in this URL and I'm gonna to go to the root of the Apple repository. So we're just gonna go into Apple. Inside of here, you see that we have our GPG keys. It has it for Apple repository for Red Hat. CentOS 4, 5, 6, and 7. So let's go ahead and copy the URL for 7 since we're running Red Hat 7. Now that's the GPG key that we need to configure inside of our system. That GPG key is the public key that's going to verify that the package is authentic coming from the repository. So let's go inside of our Etsy directory and then inside of the PKI directory and if you do an ls, you'll see rpm-gpg. So let's go into the rpm-gpg directory. Inside of here are the gpg keys on our system. Now, we don't have to keep it inside of here, but it's best practice. And so I'm going to go ahead and download that gpg key we just copied, right? So we're downloading it from the Apple repository, and this is our gpg key. And we'll hit enter. So wget allows us to download that to our system. So we're going to go ahead and now that we have that, I'm going to do a pwd and make sure we get the proper URL, right? Because we need this in order to reference our actual file. Our file location is going to be etsy pki rpm-gpg and then it's going to be our repository key name. So I'm going to go ahead and copy that. and we have a full link. Even though it hit enter, just ignore that on there, just hit enter. So this is the link I need. So I just wanted to copy that in there so you guys had the opportunity to see it and also see why I'm doing it. I need the full path. Now that I have the full path, let's go ahead and go into the Etsy directory. Then yum.repos.d. From here, we need to modify our Fedora project repo. We need to set GPG check to one, so it verifies the GPG check. Then we need to set GPG key equal to our key. So we need to reference that key location. That key location is located in a local directory. So we'll do file slash slash represents we're looking on the local file system. Then we can paste in our location. So it will have three slashes. So it'll be file slash slash and then slash Etsy PKI. We'll go ahead and hit save and exit. So now that we have that, I'm just going to do a yum install python-pip. I know that's only available within the Apple repository. So we'll hit enter. And what it's going to do is it's going to verify that we want to download it. Then we know it's going to work with GPG key because it's going to ask us if we want to verify our GPG key. 
right? So the answer to that is yes. We want to use GBG key check, and it has officially worked. So that concludes it for this lesson. This lesson, we learned how to download a GPG key from a repository. We learned how to configure it, and we learned why it is important in order to verify that the packages coming from the repository are allowed to be in that repository and are actually coming from the repository. That way, we have our public key, which is our GPG key, that verifies against the remote repository private GPG key. And that way we verify and ensure that the packages installed on our system are secure and legitimate packages. So that concludes it for this lesson. Go ahead and complete this lesson.